This is Pure Love Talks, Season 2, Episode 5. Hi, everyone. It's been a while since we've uh, done an episode. Uh, a lot has been going on. Um, for those of you who are new, I'm Ignacio. Uh, I'm Mandy. Uh, I am the parent, and this is the... Um, offspring. <laughs> I'm the parental unit, and this is the offspring. <laughs> who is also a now a parental unit. That's right. That's right. So hopefully you've been following, and you know Mandy just had a baby. Walking and walking is sleeping now, so we took the opportunity <laughs> to be recording right now. And um, so... Um, today we're going to be talking about single parenthood, but before we talk about that, uh, we just wanted to give you an update on why it's been a minute since we've, uh, you know, done a episode. A show. Yeah. Right. Uh, so um, it was the anniversary of uh, my dad and her grandfather's uh, passing, crossing over. Um, what else happened? Um, we had to put our dog Seven down after 16 wonderful years. Yes. Um, the anniversary of our other dog Chewy passing, mm -hmm. um, me adjusting to motherhood and teething, right? <laughs> um, and yeah. um, and just going through some mental health challenges. So I've been trying to do a lot of self care, and that's been hard. So yeah, so it took a little break, a much needed break, but we're back um, and hoping that people are excited. And we always ask for people to like send in questions or any comments, even if we've done an episode on a particular topic and you want to know some more about it or you have a question about it we'll be happy to answer so please send those in um you know we have our youtube channel pure love talks um and you could also see the videos on my website ig rivera that's i-g-r-i-v-e-r-a and you can hear about the heal project renewed sexuality coaching um and pure love talks okay so we we're gonna we're gonna be talking about um single parenthood because it's something that um mandy uh, wanted to talk about she brought it up as a as a topic and I thought it would be good. So tell us why you want to talk about that. Well, I wanted to bring up single parenthood and more specifically co-parenting and how to navigate because that's what I'm dealing with at the moment. Um, me and Joaquin's father are not together, so we co-parent. Um, and, you know, there's difficult times, there's good times, you know, whenever you have two people trying to come together for a singular, you know, goal you're gonna have conflicting ideas or different understandings different ways of doing things so um you know sometimes it's, it's a challenge and sometimes it's simple so i just wanted to you know talk about it because you know my mother was also a single parent for me as well and how we have similar stories and different stories because you know they're you know two different men who fathered two different children so um yeah so i just wanted to just talk about navigating mm. co-parenting well it's funny that you said you know like my mom is a single parent too and it's funny because for the longest time i would reject that title mm. um, i mean people would refer to me as a single parent i wouldn't go crazy over it but um i like to refer to myself as an independent parent and i think i called myself that because um because i don't know i think like single parent to me indicates that there's something missing and there's such a negative um thing around single parenthood um I guess very much in particular to like uh, women raising children on their own. Um, I, I think it still happens to dads, but I think women are the majority or, um, you know, like uh, people identified female at birth or um, some, I think the majority of people, you know, um, taking care of children they get the on their own, I should say on their own, right? Um, so uh, ind uh, independent parents to me felt like, um, it didn't matter whether I was with someone or wasn't. If I wasn't going to change um, anything, um, and it it, it it also feels like um, I don't know. Dare I say heteronormative? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I, I I like to think about raising you in that. Of course, I was the primary person. Um, you know, taking you to the doctors, making sure everything was okay, feeding you all the responsibilities and all that. Um, and um, 
there was help from folks. So I know a lot of people that have the model of like, you know, it takes a village to raise a child and um, having aunties and uncles around and all of that. Um, because like, what would you say to like folks or people or society at large that says, you know, like single motherhood is, and I'm saying specifically like single motherhood, single motherhood is um, basically a bad thing. That if you're a single parent and you raise a child, that that child is more likely to uh, not finish high school, um, probably go to prison. Um, all these like statistical things that they say about that. I'd say that's, excuse my language, a crock of shit. Because <laughs> I'm just like, one, I'm a prime example. I turned out perfectly fine. Um, and I know plenty of other people who turn out perfectly fine. And I think that they're focusing on the wrong thing. They're focusing on, they're making it seem as though the childhood or their nurturing or experiences are going to be deficient because there's only one parent and not focusing on why like on the love and the care that they're receiving from that one parent mm -hmm. and you know how one parent is better than no parents and or better than having two parents who are not healthy or well or taking care of you well because they're not well together you know like yeah, yeah. so i think that they're focusing on things that are less important and about an image rather than the actual care of a child because you can have a two-parent household and they can both be addicts not paying attention to their kids and their kids end up in jail anyway mm -hmm. and then you have a single parent who's very attentive and you know very loving and nurturing and they have a good relationship and their kid gets a phd or something so right, you know right. it does every case is different but to generalize is really really silly i mean i agree i don't think that generalization um is true at all and i think that even when people are identified or call themselves single parents that um i, I would hope that there are people around them that are helping from time to time of course there are a lot of instances where people do not get that help so to me when i hear like when i hear things around statistics around single parents like uh or single mothers um it's like a fast track to you know um you know, being poor or not being teen educated, pregnancies teen too. pregnancy, all that stuff. I feel like, just like you said, Mandy, that they're concentrating on the wrong thing. What they're doing is, you know, statistics is about um, how, how you analyze the stuff, right? Um, it is, I don't think it's about the one parent. It's about how society views that one parent and how they're treated and um, how, what are the resources available and how we have really like pushed away this idea of creating our own family units. I, I think we're actually more in a place that we're seeing lots of more, you know different kinds of family structures, people creating their own idea of what a family is and how to raise children together, which I think is great. Um, and so it, it's a it's almost a, a rejection I, to me all of these things is almost a rejection of if you are not in a heterosexual heteronormative married uh married you know couple dumb with you know raising a child then all will fail all will fail you know society mainly cares about the image and not the child at all so, I, in many instances i don't think they really care about the children just about how it looks Right, it's this idea that, yeah, like this is what the family is supposed to look like. But we know now that that's, we have so many different kinds of families right now, different gender, sexual orientations, like just everything, different um, mixed families is what we call them. So um, people who adopt, people who are surrogates, people, you know, there's so many different ways right now. Uh, but that that idea still stands in and that 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 language of single parent um single parenting or single parented is really interesting to me especially as a person who now in my life maybe you know earlier in my life i had different ideas and now i've shifted but um a person who um i i personally don't um believe in marriage for myself i can absolutely honor anyone who wants to be married and that is their um right to have that and um you know enjoy it and celebrate it and i i can be there celebrating that as well but i wouldn't want that for myself you know so i i don't think of myself as single or a single parent because that language doesn't fit the way I live my life, right? So when I think about that, then, as we thought, we're talking about this idea of single parenting and then co-parenting, which you're going to be doing, which I didn't have um, the uh, privilege of doing. I had relationships here and there with folks that did help out here and there, but um, a consistent, you know, person in my life that was like, you know, but 
so if we're talking about it this way as adults taking care of children and what society sees as these family structures then how do we talk to kids about this stuff right because like when Joaquin starts going to school and stuff like that different types of families because this is when they start getting socialized in school and stuff this is of course when there's like you know where's your dad or does your dad live with you or stuff right like the way I'm I'm so hoping that by the time he gets to school, the school system has had like different ways of talking about families and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, like how would you talk to him about you and La and how co-parenting is happening and how do you have models for them? Hmm. I honestly I didn't really think about that yet, but um, I would if he you know whenever he has any type of questions I'll answer but I know that I would pro I would just explain to him like um, you know like sometimes things just don't work out sometimes you know like I'll say I'll try to give him an example like mm -hmm. say you have a friend at school and whenever you guys are together working on a project or something you guys don't have the same ideas mm -hmm. and you guys end up getting frustrated because you can't work well because you have different ideas right, right so you have you chose to have a different partner for the project even though that's your friend like i'll say that's your friend it's like even though that's your friend you know doing certain projects together it's right it's right. not good for you you know like i try to give him a comparison so mm -hmm. he could like process right, right um depending on how old he is but I would also make sure that I explained to him very explicitly that just because me and his father aren't together that we're any less of a family or right. any less filled with love um, and that there's no animosity, there's no anger, Right. right. it's just the and way it is. And then also the different units that he have because there's you, me, and Joaquin together, we're a family. And yeah. then there's you and Joaquin and La, that's, you know, you have different families. And I, I, I keep thinking about uh, when you were little, the big thing was about you know, Heather has two mommies and the daddy machine and stuff like that. Like talking about gay parenting. Now we're, you know, like the week's different now. Right now, this is like 29 years later. We're, we've been talking about queer parenting for a while. So this should not be new. Maybe the trans and gender non-conforming parenting is a little um, new right now. But, you know, like um, we're, we've been talking about this for a while. So I got you those books. You know, like all these, the, the the few books that were out when you were little to just to show you about different families and stuff. Um, and so now there are a plethora of, of books now that really talk about kids that are adopted or um, insemination process or... There's um, all types, all types. Yeah, I love like it. children from a previously heterosexual marriage that now are... And differently yeah. able children, everything, yeah. So that, I, I like that. So I keep thinking that, that that's a great great way to um, have walking just learn about different families in general just in general so that because if you if you're teaching the same cookie cutter thing especially with the um you know our fairy tales and stories that we say and Mommy regurgitate and over and over and over we don't have to say that you know having a mommy and daddy are the best thing they see it everywhere <laughs> it's in every story it's in everything right so we have to be mindful about the books that we read the things that uh, we see and also the conversations because I, I i think a, po a lot of people just miss that and like sometimes we say well if they ask me anything i'll let them know but i also think it's like our job to be like you know to come to them first yeah like you know tell me about your friends like who who are your friends and well, who do they live with, right? And what do their families look like? Right. Having a conversation about all the different families, how they look, and, you know, talking about different friends and stuff. So just to get a broader, and and not just about families, cultures. And, it's everything. Know, yeah, yeah, all of it, all of it. But, you know, the interesting thing is, like, because of having you as an example and you as a mom, I never, like, single mom was never, like, a dirty term for right, me. Right, right. And when I was younger, I remember always saying, I want to be a single mom, too. Like, because it was just not like it wasn't scary to me because I, like, like, I know like in like, OK, so my cousin, she when she had her first child, her and the father ended up breaking up after the baby was born, I think, or before. Mm -hmm. And she was so, so distraught, like I wanted her to be in a two parent household and I mm. wanted her to do. And I was just like. But that's not what's important. I was like, what's important is she has a roof over her head, food in her stomach, clothes on her back, and a mom that loves her and cares for her. And she sees all that love and she's, you know, like, well-rounded and stuff. I was like, that's not what's important. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, for me, if, like, the thought about it, it was like, of course, you know, nobody wants to do it alone. 
but I was always like, if that were to happen, I'm fine with that. You know, like but you wouldn't be alone. Yes, <laughs> I'm never alone. But you know, it's like if I didn't have a a hundred percent all the time second parent involved, then I would still be okay because I had a good example on how to just get things done by yourself and. You know, it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. My kid will still be loved and happy and healthy. So I was, you know, prepared for either outcome. It, w it would be nice if it were a different, I hope that it's becoming a different world in which um, that like these conversations wouldn't even be a thing because everyone would just pitch in. Like you saying to me the other day, she says to me, you know, can you babysit? And I remember saying, you don't ever ask me to babysit like that to me that seems ludicrous like I am caring for my grandchild of course if I'm not if I'm not busy if I'm home I'm not traveling for work or whatever um, you just ask me to care for my grandchild because that I believe that that's a part of my duty right just like it's your duty to be his mother and care for him and make sure that he is okay if if we had different people and and I'm saying this now as a like a revelation later on in life because I definitely could have been better as well with my nieces and nephews there are some nieces and nephews that I uh you know have saw more when they were little and then time goes on and it's like it's it's work and it's intentional work to like uh, try to be a part of a kid's life and I didn't know the I really didn't see the importance of it or like the like the true importance of that connection was um whether it is a biological mother or father or if it's an uncle or an adoptive parent it's, it's just like the the love that's surrounded by a kid uh especially a kid knowing that they have um people that they can trust and go and talk to right nobody's that's gonna you know shoo them away and not listen to what they have to say so i this those are the people that i want to use around it with and I want absolutely the same for Joaquin. He already has so many people who love him. And I'm so grateful for that, too. Like, in two different states. Well, multiple states. But <laughs> the two main states, you know, Maryland and New York, he has family. Chosen family. And so much love surrounding him. So I'm very blessed about that. Um, but in regards to co-parenting, mm -hmm. because um, me and Joaquin's dad live in two different states, sometimes it can get difficult. Um, we have different communication styles. And you know different experiences with children so you know sometimes that can come up when um we're talking about certain things that pertain to him sometimes you know there may be friction so it gets difficult here and there but you know it's a it's an ongoing process that we're gonna have to continuously work at because this is basically the rest of our lives right like until Joaquin is an adult and he can be like, actually, I don't need this or I don't, you know, like, I don't need your advice on this. Then, you know, but I mean, still being a parent never ends. So I might still be like, hey, Joaquin said he was doing this. How do you feel about that? <laughs> so, you know, like I might still do that. But overall, this is going to be a lifelong um, partnership that we have. Mm. So it's a learning process to learn each other and learning each other as parents because dating somebody is different than being a parent with somebody um there's somebody else that we have to think about there's we have mutual goals that we both want to reach when it comes to him and we just want to see him be well-rounded and happy and healthy and smart and growing and everything so as long as i feel like co-parenting can be successful as long as both parents have the same goal in mind and they're willing to compromise, to negotiate, to speak calmly, and to really listen, you know, because mm. you never, you know, like kids, you never know what you're going to get, kind of. It's like a mystery box. <laughs> you're just like, yeah, I know it's a box, but what's inside the box? And like, what's <laughs> going to happen once I open this box? Yes. So, you know, like, and things change drastically, like. Literally one day, Joaquin woke up and he just started baby talking. And the day before, he wasn't. So, and then one day he just started cracking up. So you know, like, and then he just started crawling. So it's just every day is a different situation, a different story, and we have to deal with that accordingly. But you know what? Um, so I'm thinking too about like quickly, like co-parenting. Everything you said, you know, communication style that that's really important. And it like, but what if? that you know you don't have that and which is really really rough right because co-parenting can sound really amazing when you work at it right because you you are probably the luckiest person if you don't have to work at it if you and your ex are friends that's a beautiful thing and you can just do it no problem 
but then there are times where the breakup was for a reason, right? That there was some conflicting ideas. And so if you're having conflicting ideas in a relationship, imagine of like raising a child. So that doesn't make anybody bad or good. It just, people have different ideas. And when you've never done it before, right? That's just like a lot of new things you're learning at the same time. So it's like everybody is like doing it at the same time, learning and All three processing. of us are growing together. Right. So it's good that the both of you are really trying to work at that to like to because there's so many people that just feel like I'm out of here you pregnant bye you mm -hmm. know or I don't want this baby you know or I can't do this and that and that's no shade to anybody because everybody has their own experience and their own story and their own decisions they have to make and their own path right um yeah so it's great when that happens when it doesn't that can be a really big problem one of the things that I used to say about I have to say that I loved being an independent parent I I really did. There were so many times where things were rough as hell. I mean, rough. Um, and we made it and we did it. And I think uh, Mandy and I, our relationship was really good and close, especially especially when she was little. We had so much time together. Um, and the thing that I loved about it was that I had a, a clear way of how I wanted to raise my daughter. And I didn't have to put it by anybody. <laughs> I didn't have to Lucky. negotiate with anybody. I didn't have to do anything. Okay, you know, the, there's some good to that. And the bad part to it is that Mandy didn't get to grow up with her father, right? Um, for whatever reason, those things, you know, happen. Uh, so that, you know, there's some nice good things about it and there's some really horrible things about it. But I do have to say that I like that I was able to talk to you about activism, politics, queerness, polyamory, sex, all of these things. And I'm sure knowing the person that he is we would have fights and arguments constantly about the content of things that i was teaching her which i felt very strongly about and there was no budging me on that so that was a plus plus for the independent parent side you know but you know we could see the pros and cons to both sides i just want the weight of the cons to just lift a little bit more from the you know independent or single parent side because i think um, it is, I know, I know it is possible to do it and do it very successfully. It's society and the world. That makes um, it difficult. Yes. More difficult. Yes. Um, so, any parting words as we say our farewells? Um, well, I just, advice as a, a learning, growing parent, um, just make sure that above anything else you do, every decision that you make for your child is done with complete, 100% unselfish love has nothing to do with you. It's all about their well-being, their benefit, their growth. Doesn't matter how you feel about it. Just make the decision with, you know, good intentions for your child. And I'd like to say too, like whether you are an independent single parent or in a marriage partnership or anything like that, when we, when it when it's uh, about raising children, especially the information mm -hmm. that we want to bestow to children, it's, it's particularly around this topic that we talk about mm -hmm. as sex education and all that. No matter who you are and what kind of family structure you have, we and we really want to, we really want to be thinking about um, what are you going to be talking to your kids about, like values, right? So, like when we think about people getting together, me included, getting together, getting pregnant with someone, and then like not even once thinking about what are the values that I have? What are the values that you have? Do they coincide so that we can raise a child with these similar values? What are those values? Maybe it's the first time you've asked yourself that. What are the values you want to bestow on your child, right? To me, it's about if you have a strong foundation of values or even an idea of it, you don't have to have it concrete or anything like what kind of person do I want to put in the world? What kind of person do I want to raise? What kind of person do I want to support and love? If you, I think if you think about that really well, hopefully um, you will have two people, three people, one person, you know, coming to a decision about what's the best thing for the child. Just like you said, best thing for the child. The children is the most important part of that whole equation. All right. So remember again, send us questions. Thank you so much for all your support. Yes. And, and we patience. will see you next time. <laughs> Hopefully next month. Yes. For Pure Love Talks. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Um, we, you know, like we want to be able to. Um, I, I, I hate that I messed that part up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're going to have to. Edit. Yeah, I know. What was I saying? I was saying. Uh, God damn it.
the last few minutes. <laughs> I, had, I had a good thing in my head. Wait a minute. So I said, do do everything with love. Lead with love. Oh, okay. 